Hey what's up guys, back again with another video. This episode I'm going to show you how to set up C Lion for C and C++ development. Alright guys, so um, yeah, I'm probably going to be doing a C++ series sometime soon in the future. Um, you know, I don't know exactly when that's going to happen, but it'll probably happen. And so you're going to want a, you know, IGE or development environment so you can uh, code with C++ or even C, you know. So um, one that I like or one that I found is actually C Lion, which is um, very powerful because it's made by JetBrains. You know, it's a good company. That's where I use my uh, JetBrains uh, development environment. That's good for, you know, Java and stuff like that if you've seen my other tutorials. But for uh, C++, you're going to use C Lion, okay? And uh, you can use a 30-day free trial um, just to test it out and stuff like that. But I believe this version, you uh, or this program here specifically, the C Lion IDE, you have to actually buy, besides the free trial, of course. So um, I already have access to it because, you know, I have, a, um, I have a student email for the university that I might be going to. I have a student email, and then I register for the student like uh, license and all that. So if you have a student email, you could, of course, get a license that it gives you access to all of JetBrains IDEs for free, basically, okay? So if you want to do that, go ahead and figure that out. But, uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do here is download this, okay? So make sure you click download if you want to do that also, if you haven't done it already. But what I'm going to do is not do that. I'm actually going to go down here to the toolbox, which is, you know, another uh, program by JetBrains, which is um, it basically allows you to install different you know IDEs and stuff like that that they provide okay so all I gotta do here is just click install and then it'll install it for me so I'll be right back when it's done installing okay my dudes and dudettes it's done installing and all that fun stuff so what you're gonna wanna do now of course is open C line once it's done doing that so I can just click it here if I want to but if you don't know how to uh, open it you get some C line down here if you want to and then you know click it and open it and yeah as you can see here it's now loading up it looks really cool I accidentally just got rid of it, but it'll pop back up in a second once it's done loading. Uh, here, oh, it's on my other screen for some reason. I'll move it over in a second. Okay, so I have the program open here, and you're going to see something different probably if it's your first time installing it, okay? You're probably going to see a screen that tells you to set up something or maybe even create a project or something like that. And don't worry, we're going to do that right now. So just ignore what I have here, and you're going you're gonna to want to go to the settings, okay? So go to settings and then go to build execution and deployment and then go to tool chains okay and what we need to do now is set up a uh, compiler for the C and C++ environment okay and this will make sure that we can actually run C++ and C if we want to on our computer okay and so I already have one here but I'm going to delete it so I can show you how to install your own so the first thing you want to do is create a new one here so I'm going to call mine well it, it already named it for me but it's going to be mingw okay and this is the this is like one of the most popular compilers that you can use to actually do C++. And you're probably not going to have it installed on your system likely. So what you can do here is just click download and it'll take you to the page you can actually download it for your system, okay? So we just go ahead and click source uh, source forge here. It'll take us to the download page and now it's uh, it's downloading it in 3 seconds. 2 1 Okay, now it's downloading it and now we can open this installer here. And then you click yes, of course. Next, I already installed it, so I, um, you know, I'm not going to com complete this whole process, but whatever. So the first thing you want to do is actually set the architecture. If you have a 32-bit system like your computer, I'd uh, be going to leave it how it is. But if you have a 64-bit system, you're going to change it to this one here. Okay, pretty simple stuff. And then click next, and then finish installing it. Okay. So once it's done installing, um, you're going to want to go back here to your IDE, and then you want to find or show your IDE where it's located okay so I can just click here and then you want to go to the file location where you installed it okay so mine is here on the E drive so I'm gonna let that load here and uh, let's find where I put it okay it says um, NGW right here that's where I installed it and then so you open this file this is where all the folders are and files that you know was installed a second ago so click this one here and then click OK, OK? And now what it's going to do is do, um, it's going to look through all these folders and make sure that it has the C++ and C compiler installed inside of it, OK? So let that go ahead and load and detect everything for you. And then once that's done, you can click Apply here. So I'm just going to wait a second, and then I'll click uh, Apply. 
Oh, there it's done right there. And by the way, it says the version that you installed, of course. So we're running version 8.1, okay? So it's able to detect all that for you. It's all very magical, okay? Anyway, so click apply. Apply. I guess it doesn't want to apply. Now I'll just I'll just move this up here by the way. If you move it up here, it'll set it to the default. So whenever you're trying to run, you know, the program, it'll automatically know by default to actually run what you just set here. And this is gonna this is of course your compiler, like I said. So I can close this here. Um, and so now assuming you don't have the screen open, you go ahead and do a new project. And then you're gonna want to choose whatever you're trying to run. Okay, so for example, we're just gonna run a simple C file. So the first thing we want to do is set the file location for that file. So um, what you want to do here is set the location of that and then right here this untitled is going to be the name of the folder that the files are stored in, okay? So we're going to call it um, uh, YouTube Setup, okay? So that's going to be the folder, like I said, of the project, okay? And that's where it is located, okay? So anyway, now you'll also want to set the version of C++ that you're using. I'm just going to go ahead and set it to C++17 just because why not? And then now click Create and it's going to do all that magical stuff for you. So give it a second to load everything. As you can see here, it loaded up a new project for us that we can use. And it's called YouTube Setup, like we told it to uh, be called. And we can open the files just like this. It's already open, but yeah. And so down here, as you can see, it's loading the CMake project. So it's loading the compiler and doing a bunch of stuff in the background just to set up your project for you. Okay, everything's done, you know, loading the background, whatever it needs to do. So if you want to run this program, for example, you can also just click this, this uh, play symbol right here. And now it's going to build everything and run it for you. And now it says hello world, just like the program was told to do. Okay, so that's just an example of how you can run it. Um, so also you can right click here in case this doesn't show up. You can right click and then, you know, click run YouTube setup. Okay, that's just another way. But anyway, so now that we actually, you know, installed the C Lion IDE and installed uh, MinGW, which, you know, is the compiler and all that, you're pretty much done. So what I'm, what I'm going to do now is um, show you some extra plugins and stuff that you can do or can, that you can install to make your uh, IDE even more awesome, okay? So if you're interested, you can keep watching. So I already have this special um, theme set on my IDE, of course, because I had it um, installed previously. So what that means is your IDE is not going to look like this probably. It's going to look a little different, not completely different, but a little different in terms of the styling and the theme and all that. So if you want to install this sexy theme that I have here, it's nice and clean. You can go to settings, okay? And this is where you can get plugins, so click plugins here. And now they have this little plugin marketplace where you can install really cool plugins, okay? So if you see anything you're interested in, just click install for that plugin. You can even search for plugins, and that'll be cool. And so for this um, theme that I have here, if you scroll down a little bit, it's actually really popular, so it's going to be right down here. Let's find it. It uh, should be down here somewhere. Um, maybe not. Okay, whatever. So we'll just search material. Okay, press enter, and now you have material theme UI. Okay, it's thirty-two, uh, three point two million downloads. That's a lot. So that basically tells you that how um you know how popular it is. So if you want to install it, just click install, and it's going to take you through a whole setup process. So I'm going to go ahead and try uninstalling this for you guys, so I can show you that whole process. Okay, so if you want to uninstall a plugin, by the way, just go to installed. And then click the plugin here, and then you can click to disable it if you want to, or you can uninstall it. So I'm going to uninstall it, so yes, and it's gonna, I'm going to restart real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, so it started back up, and as you can see, my um, IDE, my C Lion IDE looks a lot like yours probably, if you don't have what I installed. So yeah, like I said, if you want to install it, you can go to File, Settings, and then we'll check out the plugin marketplace again. And we're going to search for Material again, and so we're going to install it. I'm going to show you the whole process. So click install here, and then it'll install it, download it, install it for you. And then what we're going to need to do is probably restart it. Yep. So click restart, restart, and then it'll do that. So give it one second. It doesn't take very long. All right. So it's starting up for you. And let's see here. So this is what's probably going to pop up when you install it, okay? It didn't pop up for me because I installed it already. But this is probably what's going to pop up. So click next, uh, next for themes. And then you can actually choose any of these themes here. There's a you know a good amount of options here. They all look pretty awesome, pretty sexy. And so the one that I like is just the simple white one. Not this one, but the other one. It's called One Light. So I'm going to select that one, and then I can go to the next part. And then now you can select whether you want to turn on high contrast or contrast mode. Um, you know, they just change the layout or however it looks. You know, it's some extra detail if you want that. I like high contrast, so you can see it better in the video and stuff like that. So if you want that, go ahead and uh, click that. 
And so next you can choose the accent color, which is going to be the color that shows up for like these things right here. As you can see, it's pink right now. So if you want to change it, you just click here and then you can mess around with this. Okay. And then click choose. So that's for that. I'm going to leave it how it is. And then so other settings, you can choose any other settings that you want to choose. So that's what that is. And then click finish and then click start. So that's going to do that for you. As you can see here, it's a little bit of a glitch. So if you restart, it should fix that by itself. And yeah, so so there you go. That's how you install the material theme. That's really cool, right? So if we go to tools and we can uh, we can see the options for the material theme, okay? You can uh, change the theme if you want to. You could see some extra colors, like bricks, uh, brick accent. I don't know what I just did. I think I changed the color of this. That's awesome. Whatever. Um, you know, different options here. But anyway, um, what I want to show you now is one more plugin. Whenever you're playing something, for example, you know it, it says on Discord playing with you know whatever game you're playing. Let's get it to show up disk uh, show up the IDE right here so people can see what program you're editing and everything like that. That's a cool plugin. So we go to the marketplace and we'll search for Discord. Okay, and then you want to install right here this Discord integration. Okay, so click install and then it'll do that for you. And this will be really cool. So let's let's actually restart it because we have to. Okay, now it's restarted, but as you can see here, oops, come back. As you can see here on our oh my gosh, as you can see here on our Discord, it shows uh, JetBrains IDE, right? So if you click it, it also shows some more information. So it shows the the name of the project you're working on and the name of the file that you're working on, how long you worked on it, and it shows this right here, the language and the uh, IDE. So that's really cool. As you can see, that's awesome, right? So that's just an example of another plugin that you can install. And the last thing I want to show you is how to make your font size bigger in case you know. Well, the reason I want to do it is just because I'm recording, so you know I want to make it. I want to make it so that you guys can see it better. But just for example, I want to show you guys how to do it too. So if we go to Editor Font, um, you can actually change it here. But since we're actually working with the you know the material theme, we actually have to click this, and it'll take us to the settings for the material theme, and then we can change the size if we want to right here. Okay, so play around with that if you want to. You can change the font also, so that's really cool. But anyway, um, that's how you do all of that. Hopefully you like this. Um, if you have any questions about you know the process for installing this, if you ha if you came across any problems, you could of course ask in the comment section. If you have any ideas for another episode we could do, let me know. So yeah, if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.